Hey everybody, welcome back to another reaction video. Hope you're doing well. My name is Todd. This is Top 10 Friendship Moments from One Tree Hill. This video was requested by a ToddReacts.com member. You two can join today. Link down below. Description will get you there. Do a like on the video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Hit that notification bell. That way you know when videos post immediately. You can come check it out. And let's go. They were here. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 friendship moments on One Tree Hill. For this list, we'll be looking at some of the best times the Tree Hill gang were the definition of friendship. Now we're gonna sit. Spoiler alert. <laughs> and you are gonna cry on my shoulder for as long as you need to. Number 10, Away Game. A strange set of circumstances puts Lucas and Nathan together on the same side for once, and Brooke, Peyton, and Haley are all together on the way home from a Ravens away game. This is the moment in the show where we first see the main group coming together. I hear birds. Unbelievable, Brooke! Did you not think to put gas in the car? Answer the question, Brooke. Even though it's just a moment, it's an important one to their development. For the first time, Lucas and Nathan are actually on the same page. And I know that you could throw a pretty damn good punch. I say let's take these fools on. All right, I'm up for that. They fight the guys trying to mess with them together, talk about their dad, and gain a new level of understanding with each other. Peyton, Brooke, and Haley experience their own adventure, where they discover that their worlds aren't that different after all. Strange. Just. The night away from school, it feels like you and I actually live on the same planet. I play tricks on you like that. Number 9. Peyton and Brooke <laughs> versus Psycho Derek After several friendship-ruining fights over the Scott boys, Brooke and Peyton have called it quits. It hurt. It did. <sighs> Not anymore, because you and me, we're done. But when they're both kidnapped by Peyton's fake half-brother, Psycho Derek, they decide to stop fighting what? with each other and fight together instead. Peyton, Peyton, he's moving! Just get out of here! Oh, no, I'm not leaving you! Despite Derek's seemingly That's superhuman wild. strength, the two of them kick his ass as a team. After watching these two lifelong besties throw each other away time and oh time again, <laughs> it's a relief to finally see them get back together, even if it took such extreme measures to get them there. I guess now it's toes over psychos. <laughs> Number 8. Slumber Party When the boys are away, the girls will play. With Nathan mm. and Lucas out of town for the night, Brooke decides to Classic. throw a slumber party at Haley's place. Pillow Brooke, fight. Haley, Peyton, and Anna have a crazy night where obscure secrets come out and hilarious fights ensue. At least I didn't lie to my husband about hanging out with Chris. Whoa! Brooke, well, Peyton did cocaine with that Rick guy. Haley! What? You had sex in her bed! Okay. What is wrong with you? But ultimately, they share some of the <laughs> deepest parts of themselves wow. with each other, becoming okay. better friends than ever before, and officially welcome Anna to the group. Don't get too used to it. You're with us now. It's a moment even more fun than when Brooke and Peyton threw a bachelorette party for Haley. Show me the pole! <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Haley! Number seven, Jimmy's yearbook. Jimmy Edwards became a controversial topic for the Tree Hill gang after the school shooting. Get away from the door. He used to be best friends with Luke, Mouth, and the River Court guys, but as far as everyone knew at the time, Jimmy killed Luke's uncle Keith. Mouth especially struggled with his complicated feelings Holy about spoiler. Jimmy. Holy spoiler. It happened. It's a part of all of us. But he deserves to be remembered. But upon noticing that Jimmy has been excluded from the senior yearbook, Mouth has a special one made for him. He gets up in front of the student body and reminds them of good times with Jimmy, and asks them to sign it. If you knew Jimmy, even for a short time, then you probably have some good memories of him. And I hope you'll consider writing him down in this yearbook. Thanks. In spite of the fact that everyone still believes that Jimmy killed Keith, Lucas is the first one to get up and sign, in tribute to his old friend. Number 6. Brooke lets Lucas wow. go. I brought you something. Thought you could this use is a it. big moment. Seen something? It's a to-go box. You know, since you're screwing my leftovers. The love triangle between Brooke, <laughs> Lucas, and Peyton <laughs> oh, brought on a yeah. lot of drama and a lot oh, of fighting. So this moment where Brooke finally lets go of all that anger is beautiful. During the celebration at good. the end of the state championships game, it's Brooke that encourages Lucas to go after Peyton once and for all. So who do you want standing next to you? Go. 
It's okay. It's a moment that marks not only Brooke's personal growth and maturity, but the growth and maturity of all of their wow. friendships. And they all emerge stronger and better friends than ever. You know, love triangles are so high school. Seriously. <laughs> Number five, Quentin and Jamie. Oh, no. One they, of the greatest friendships of this show is school. also one of the most tragic. Everything between Quentin and Jamie was absolutely adorable. Their goofy dances and silly raps are unforgettable. I said they call him Jay Lucas, so what up your Dukas? The boy blowing up and the boy that shook us, hey! I call him Q Fields, he's a pretty big deal. Jamie looked up to Q and Q was like a mentor to him. They had the type of relationship that's life-changing. I was a kid, I used to put all my little treasures in here. See that? Hmm? Now you can too. Cool, thanks, Q. So when Quentin was killed, it was all the more devastating. Oh, God. Jamie lost his best bud. But what about his cape? Oh, Jamie's. Jamie, honey, listen to me. He's gonna like it, you'll see. We all cried our eyes out when Jamie made oh, a cape for wow. Q, just like his own, to put on his grave. Number four, Haley helps Brooke start oh, clothes over bros. That's Do you remember rough. when Brooke and Haley didn't even like each other? It's hard to imagine such a time existed when you think about moments like this one between them. Close over bros? <laughs> mm. Close over bros. When Brooke is depressed over her designs being stolen by a fashion store, Haley gives Brooke a much needed pep talk telling her just how amazing she is and that she doesn't need anyone else to follow her That's dreams. a good friend. Oh, so what? So they stole a couple of designs. They didn't That's steal really your talent. Friend. She convinces her to bet on herself and start her own clothing line. And as we all know, Brooke would later become a fashion icon with that clothing line she created in her living room. Thankfully for Brooke, she had a friend who believed in her when she didn't believe in herself. Wow. It is stylish though. <laughs> Number three, boy toy auction. The night of the Ravens boy toy auction oh, was a night where old friendships were rekindled <laughs> and new friendships were formed. Peyton and Nathan, Haley and Lucas, and Brooke and Mouth set out on a night of adventure. This is the moment where Brooke and Mouth's incredible friendship is born. Let's do some damage. Peyton and Nathan redefine their relationship as they realize that they are so much better as platonic friends than they ever were as boyfriend and girlfriend. And Lucas and Haley renew their lifelong friendship after having grown apart in their new lives and I've relationships. I've only seen two episodes and that with me. sounds right. <laughs> because I wanted to remember for a night the way that things were. Everything was so much simpler when it was just you and me. Number two, Haley officiates Luke and Peyton's wedding. By the power vested in me by OneMinuteMinister.com, <laughs> I now pronounce you <laughs> man and wife. It seems only fitting that Haley is the one to officiate Luke and Peyton's wedding, especially after Luke walked her down the aisle at her own wedding. There's no better symbol of their lifelong friendship than being a part of each other's weddings. Nice. Her speech revealing Luke's high school predictions that he would one day marry Peyton is hilarious and heartwarming. And he said, no, Peyton Sawyer is not human. She's an angel and she's my angel. Of course, she had to embarrass her best friend just a little on his big day. Peyton Sawyer will become Peyton Scott. Lucas wrote this in the eighth grade. And it's not the only time Haley got to give a tear-jerking speech at one of her best friend's weddings. <laughs> her matron of honor speech for Brooke is an equally touching symbol of their growth as friends. I got a glimpse of the real Brooke, a girl with the biggest heart that I have ever known. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Stashed throughout the room, you will find various heavy artillery. I want you all to consider your next move very carefully. As you know, Brooke's probably one of the most popular people in school. Something I'm definitely not. And yet she's my friend. The two of us have been down very similar roads. I mean, we were in the same cliques first. We both felt the same pressures, same expectations. Our parents were like children. And we both grew into kind of bad versions of ourselves way too fast. I'd like to buy this dress. No, it's too much. I think it's worth every cent, and I want to pay for it. Wow. Ethan, I want you to change his godmother. Okay, that's gonna do it. <laughs> Haley! Number one, River Court game after graduation. After the last party celebrating the official end of their senior year, the whole gang heads to the River Court for one last game. 
After so many ups and downs, fights, and betrayals, the gang is unified in their love for each other. Girls versus boys! It reminds us of when the Rivercourt boys and the Ravens put their differences aside and played together simply for the love of the game. The gang signed their names on the river court, marking their bond and vow to be friends forever. We'll all be friends forever. I know it. Look, in four years, we'll be right back here. And most of them do end up keeping that promise. And who could forget that final one on one match between Nathan and Lucas, mirroring their first game in the pilot? It was oh, the perfect way beautiful. to end their senior that's year. Beautiful. Sure for this old man? I could do this forever, little brother. Do you agree with our picks? <laughs> Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And that's sure so cool. Oh, man. It's spoiler heavy, videos. but that's very cool. Link down below in the description for the original video. Go throw out some love. I mean, what more do you want than the final? I don't know if it's the final scene or the final episode, but Lucas and Nathan balling it up one last time. That's awesome. That's so cool. They must have had that plan in their heads for ever like this is how we're gonna wrap it up we're gonna bring them together they're gonna be best buds and we're gonna make them play one more game i absolutely love that concept that's so cool i have actually reacted to two episodes so far of one tree hill available at toddreacts.com i mean it seemed fairly obvious that nathan and peyton were not a match so i am happy to see they finally found the light and they're like you know what we're not good for each other this isn't working keith getting killed that is brutal i literally just said in the second episode reaction it's great that lucas has someone like that in his life and it's just oh i don't know how i'm gonna ever recover from that that is the most beautiful thing about high school and being forced to be in this area with people your own age is that you form bonds with people and maybe different groups of people but a lot of people. What's great about high school and school in general is the fact that you are surrounded by people your own age and the amount of friends that you have and the bonds, oh my gosh. Like after school, it is difficult to find friends. I mean, yeah, you can find them online, but chances are they live on the other side of the planet or <laughs> you can do something that you enjoy like a hobby or whatever, but it is, it's tough. You gotta put in work especially if you're moving around and whatnot. But then again, most people actually stay in their own hometown their entire life. So I guess most people don't have to worry about it too badly as long as they keep up the friendships. But yeah, if you move around, it gets exhausting. <laughs> and it gets real quiet. What'd you think of the list? Was that a good top 10? Do you have other ones that you'd put in there? Was something in there where you're like, eh, not that great? Let me know down below in the comments. Appreciate your watching, appreciate your time, especially. I shall see you on the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye.